uh, witnesses for being here today and for sharing their insights on, uh, on this subject. Uh, I think a lot of people assume that South Dakota's horse culture is more confined to um, uh, ranch horses and rodeo, but uh, interestingly enough, my home state is also home to some, some quarter horse racing. We've got uh, divided into three weekend stretches, both the Stanley County and Brown County Fairgrounds host at least a couple of dozen races each weekend during the spring. And I know it's not as prominent as it is in other parts of the country in states like Kentucky, Florida, and California. One thing is clear, and that is that everyone uh, involved uh, wants to ensure that, horse, uh, that horses are being treated and cared for in the most uh, humane manner possible. Um, so I, I appreciate the, the hearing and uh, obviously the, the testimony being furnished by the panelists here today and hearing about uh, what options might be able to con be, be considered in the future. Uh, let me just ask a general question. If it's already been asked, I apologize. But uh, just with everything else, uh, other things being equal, um, would it be desirable to have uh, a national set of uh, standards for performance enhancing medication? Is that something that any of you support? Yes. No. Yes. Yes. If, uh, if such a standard is established. All witnesses indicated yes, that's, for I, the record. I, that's a, yeah. I saw some nodding, but thank you for it's pointing that out, Mr. Chairman. Uh, if such a standard was established, how might enforcement be carried out uniformly? I think, I think the thing that would help us the most if, if the federal government got involved would be to establish a couple of super labs. What we do now is foolish because every state has their own lab. So the resources are being spread out too thin. If we had uh, a super lab on the West Coast and a super lab on the East Coast where we could, uh, they would have the, you know, more money going to them, uh, I think this is just a money problem. That's why we can't catch them. We don't spend enough money. Uh, I, I, don't do think, I don't think that the answer is a laboratory. It doesn't work in cycling and it doesn't work in track and field. What works is policing and investigating because you can only test for what you know you're looking for. You can't just test for something that's out there that you don't know about. So what you need to do is you need to get the FBI or the DEA involved, do some good old fashioned police work, find out what some of these drugs are that are being used, and then you can test for them. The, pro the problem is I met with the state police in New Jersey. Actually, I have more ability to police than they do because for, for uh, uh, an organization like the state police, they have to have probable cause before they can ask someone to open up the trunk of their car uh, to see what's inside, whereas it's private property. So if someone drives their, their horse van onto my racetrack, I can ask them to open up the trunk of their car. So surprisingly, I have more ability to catch somebody than the police do, and, and it's frustrating. But I was shocked, but that's the fact. In our, in our Constitution, for a policeman to ask you to open the trunk of your car, he has to have probable cause that, that, you're, that you have syringes or illegal medication. Whereas I don't have to have probable cause. I could just say open the trunk. So it's tough. And uh, um, I agree that, that drug testing is very difficult because they're always one step ahead of us. But I've been told by certain veterinarians that if they, by labs, if they ha had more money, uh, that they think they could could catch these guys. The other thing that's frustrating is nobody ever, uh, you know, rats them out. It seems to be a, you know, code of of, uh, of conduct that says, you know, don't squeal on these guys. Everybody watches and sees what's going on. But as the owner of a racetrack, when I reach out and say, tell me, nobody wants to tell you. It's really frustrating. If uh, uh, well, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Mr. Gurrell. If I could, yes. Um, I think Mr. Gurrell hit on it before. Um, obviously, the, the drug labs are doing the best they can. But when we get somebody, he's obviously doing his due process. But, but we have a tendency not to throw the book at him. And that's what needs to be done. Uh, these demorphins that we were talking about, uh, a person that has one of those doesn't, one strike and you should be out on something like that. I mean, we have to crack down on those kind of people. And when you do that, I, I strongly believe you'll see less and less people trying to have their little chemists on the side and, 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 and trying to beat the system. We, we just don't really take care of, of the people that, that do the things and put them out of the business for good. They, they're back in six months, they're back in a year. I'd like to 
add, if I may, uh, on to what Mr. Grau said about the labs. Uh, we have about 18 labs in this country that are forensically testing uh, race, re race results, samples from races. Um, those labs are, are wildly different at times in their cost per sample, uh, which indicates to us that there are different standards. Uh, we, in, our, in the rules that I cited earlier, would look for all those labs to reach a certain level of accreditation that's been set by the industry that would be the highest and based in, in large measure on what was established by WADA. We believe that having the labs at that, that much heightened standard would improve the prosecution immensely. If I could add on to that, we do have lab accreditation. As long as they're accredited internationally, the uh, ISO 17025 standards, uh, then they're pretty credible laboratories. The problem is a lot of these laboratories are by statute belong to state universities and things like that. And it's going to be really tough to go in there, I mean, it almost take the government to do that, to tell the state university they can no longer have that testing lab because many, many of them are, are at some of our, our biggest state, our biggest uh, Thoroughbred labs are located at state universities. So my time's expired, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Thune. Thank you very much. Um, they, 